Um, this incident, three British aid workers killed in Gaza, it has added to the worldwide outcry over the way in which Israel has conducted this war. How do you respond to that? Well, first of all, this is a devastating tragedy for the families and communities of those people of the World Central K Kitchen uh, uh, organization. It is a tragic mistake, a misidentification on our behalf. Uh, we are in the midst of an investigation that I expect to be concluded in the next couple of days um, so that we know exactly what went wrong. What was the mistake? Uh, you, 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 say, you say confidently that this was a mistake. Which part of it was a mistake? Because this is three separate attacks, three separate missiles hitting three separate cars that were clearly labelled. What are you claiming at the moment so confidently that was mistaken? It was a misidentification. And this is a, um, what our... Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi said very clearly yesterday in the early hours of yesterday morning that the misidentification was um, uh, uh, was before the strike was conducted. Um, we need to understand what was the nature of that misidentification, um, what happened in the dark, in the early hours of, of darkness in the complex uh, scenarios of warfare. Um, and indeed, we have two uh, key components of our investigations that are ongoing. First of all, an operational component, an operational investigation, which is um, in order to create the terms and conditions that we can continue to conduct humanitarian operations during the off effort, the war effort, which is ongoing. And second of all, an independent of the chain of command investigation, which means that a, a former that will have all of the tools and access to all of the information. Um, and they're not dependent on anything. And they're obviously because they are former retired officers, they don't, they're not dependent on promotion or, or anything, and they can come to their own conclusions. And I expect that to be also to be revealing in the next couple of days. Um, it is, uh, you know, clearly this shouldn't have happened. Clearly we have to be uh, much better at making sure that the humanitarian aid gets to the people in need. And those that are doing the humanitarian activities are protected. Yeah, and they don't they don't get killed doing doing that work. You know, that's the basic assumption that they communicate with you to say this is where we are, this is where we're going to be operating. We need to be protected. I just want to put to you what the founder of World Central Kitchen has said. His allegation is that Israeli forces targeted aid workers systematically car by car. That's what happened, isn't it? So again, I don't want to come to conclusions before and based on uh what uh, Chef uh, Jose Andres is saying. Um, but indeed, the investigation will come to the conclusion. We'll be sharing that as soon as it's possible uh, because it's important to be both transparent and, um, and and get to the bottom of this. And that is what we intend on doing. Um, so I don't want to confirm those um, facts, those issues. Of course, uh, there is a result of three strikes against the three vehicles, uh, which is clear. So I don't need to be... Um, uh, involved in investigation to know that because that actually happened. But we have to understand what was the source of the misidentification and what was identified, what was thought to be, and what created this devastating result. And Peter, there have been over 200 aid workers who have already been killed by the IDF in Gaza. Why do you think it is now that three British aid workers have been killed, that there's far more of a furore over the fact that the IDF have made this so-called mistake in killing aid workers. Why don't you think there was such an outcry when 200 Palestinian aid workers have been killed by the IDF? I think we need to be very cautious in those numbers that are circulating. We know for a fact that some of those UNRWA aid workers were involved in the October 7th massacre. Um, so let's, uh, you know, we have to be very, very, rather than talk about numbers, let's talk about details. Of course, this is uh, a very, very complex war, unprecedented in the nature of urban warfare. And we are, as we move move forward, going to great lengths to try and uh, mitigate and limit civilian casualties and the influence of this war on civilians. Um, while there are and there can be unfortunate tragedies that we've experienced over the last um, uh, in this incident with the WCK, uh, we have to uh, be very, very clear that there are hundreds of coordinations, 
act, actions and movements that are taking place every single day. Um, so of course, that we have to make sure that no mistakes happen. Um, but it is a, a nature of the complexities and the fog of war that does happen on the ground. Uh, we need to strive to limit and keep those mistakes as, as few as possible. And it is Peter, a tragedy. Peter, we've had two guests on the show this morning, who, both who are familiar with IDF policy, who've suggested that it's accepted within the IDF that there could be around 15 to 20 uh, innocent civilians' lives taken per Hamas member. Is that true? Is there a number given to IDF soldiers to say that it is acceptable for 15 to 20 innocent people to die per Hamas soldier? That's ludicrous. That's nothing to, that has nothing to do with our rules of engagement. Our rules of engagement are actually very clear. The enemy is the enemy. Civilians need to be spared. We have to do everything possible in order to limit civilian casualties. Um, of course, the, the, the reality is that our enemy have and are trying to take advantage of the values that you and I hold dearly. They are intentionally embedding themselves within hospitals. They're intentionally utilizing their tunnel system beneath uh, residential areas. They are used, on, used, used and they have used schools and UN facilities to try and shield their activities, intentionally putting people at harm, in harm's way, where we are going out of our way to try and limit the going, civilian... Peter, community. if you're going out of your, why, out of your way, why are 32,000 people dead? Why are there reports from hospitals in Gaza that children are receiving gunshot wounds from sniper rifles? Why is there such a high death count if you're going out of your way to protect civilian lives? So that number that you're quoting is the number that the Hamas Ministry of Health... What are your numbers? That, that, no, that number is what the Ministry of what Hamas... What are your Ministry numbers, Peter? Distributing. And I would be quite frank... You know, Peter, I'm asking know you a very it. simple question. What are your numbers? What, are the, what is Israel's number of innocent civilian deaths in Gaza? And I'm trying to answer. I'm being very frank. We don't know civilian casualties. I'm t and I would challenge that Hamas also don't know. Um, they are basing their um, information on social media reports, not on facts on the ground. And I would I would actually charge that what we, they are not counting the terrorists that are being killed or they are they are um, uh, the, the numbers and names that they've distributed have been really upside down. And, and that's why we need to be very, very cautious. Of course, this is a war in a densely populated area in a very challenging reality. But how can you a be cautious that, you know, if you don't even know the numbers war. of innocent civilians who, who have been killed? I'm trying to, I'm really trying to wrestle with this idea that you're being very precise and careful, and yet you cannot give me a number. You happily will give a number of Hamas um, members who have died, but not innocent civilians. It doesn't quite work. Because we don't, it's very clear, because we don't target civilians. We target Hamas terrorists. Our enemy is the, the terrorists. So I can say that with, with a good level of confidence that anything between 11 and 13,000 terrorists have been killed at the, at, the, at the strikes of the IDF. That is what we know, because those are the people, those are the enemy, those are the um, uh, those that are taking advantage of the civilian arena, those that have weaponized the civilian arena, those are the people we are targeting. So when we have confirmed kills by our airstrikes or our forces on the ground, so those are the numbers that I can confirm. I don't know because we are not targeting civilians. Civilians are uh, caught up in this war are a tragedy. It's a war that Israel never wanted, a war Israel was forced into by Hamas that launched a war on Israel on the 7th of October. If you're expecting us not to fight Hamas because they're hiding behind the people of Gaza and raise a white fly flag of surrender, I'm afraid that won't cut it. Please, we I will don't not, think we your allies are surrender. expecting you not to do that. Uh, the words of our prime minister is that Israel's actions are becoming increasingly intolerable really quickly. Um, you run the risk of alienating your allies, the US, at the UK. We could be in a situation where technology that the UK gave you then killed British civilians. You know, what assurances are you going to give to the UK, to the US, to say, You've said it's a mistake. Something like this will not happen again, that we won't in a week, in a month's time, be having such a similar conversation again. Uh, I hope we won't have this uh, a similar conversation again. I know what we would be trying to do, and I know what we've been doing over the last couple of days. Um, the IDF has been in touch with uh, counterparts in the US and UK militaries, uh, sharing our preliminary findings. Um, and, and indeed, we will make those assurances, learn from the mistakes of this tragedy and push forward. Uh, there needs to be one outcome of this war for the safety and security of all people in the regions, Israeli and Palestinian alike. 
Hamas have to go. They have to go now. We have to bring home and release all of the hostages. 134 Israelis are still being held in the clutches. This war could be over today. Hamas can release the hostages and surrender unconditionally, and we can go back to rebuilding our lives.